so the center's mission is really about um, moving technology from the labs at MIT into the marketplace. So we focus on the commercialization of university technology. Innovation covers a very wide spectrum of activities. So if you looked at, uh, you know, Apple, Google, uh, Starbucks, Amazon, we could say they are very innovative companies. But they really aren't doing what we do. What we do is something different. We're doing science-based innovation. So they are doing uh, business process innovation, engineering innovation, they're designing things really putting a whole lot of things together and creating a new combination. Whereas what we do here at MIT, a lot of what we're doing is really taking science from the labs and trying to build these enabling technologies that the Amazons, the Microsoft, the Googles, the Apples will actually use later on. But that's actually quite challenging because you do run into the laws of physics and chemistry and how do you make all this stuff work. If I look at this, starting a company based on university technology, so if they want to start a, um, some sort of non-technical company, that's a different set of challenges. But really, if you look at the challenge, taking work that they've been doing in their lab and trying to start a company around it, um, there are two things that you have to look at. One is technology risk and the other is market risk. From a technology risk standpoint, can you actually do what you need to do in a reliable, repeatable, cost-effective way, as opposed to a one-off in the lab? But can you actually productize this and, and will it be cost-effective? And the second thing is really market risk. When you finally develop this product, will it have the features, specifications, performance that are needed by whatever segment of the market you're going after? The key with a small company is really that you need a team, uh, especially in the technical space. You need a team that has both business and technical expertise. So it's hard to have that in the same person. You, you generally want more than one person, someone who understands business, who understands finance, who understands marketing, um, a technical person who not only understands what the technology can do, but really has the engineering skills to build something, to produce it, put it all together. Um, and the fundamental thing in a startup is you need good people and good leadership because it's about can you attract and assemble a team and then do you have the management and the leadership to really motivate and lead that team forward. There's two, two major areas. Um, we provide some grant funding, so we're providing some money, small amounts of money, um, to researchers to really further their research, take it to the point where it can be spun out. Um, so this would be known as translational, possibly proof of concept um, funding. But we also provide a lot of support services really to try and help them both understand the marketplace, inform what they do in the research. Um, and we have a large group of volunteers who work with the project teams to really move the technology forward. We've been around for about 11 years now and we've funded about 110 projects. And of those, we've had um, 28 spin-out companies that have raised um, around $400 million. Now, um, the spin-outs are across a wide range, but if I look at, at just two of them in the material space, uh, one is QD Vision, which does work with quantum dots, and um, they, their technology is used in some Sony televisions now to give um, much better color um, and, and also in lighting. Uh, another company which came out of the center is 1366 Technologies, which is developing um, photovoltaic cells, solar cells, uh, silicon-based, um, using a new production process which they hope to, to drop the price dramatically and again they're uh, done fairly well. 